All right, so let's take a look at this problem. This one is called generate parentheses. Given n pairs of parentheses, write a function to generate all combinations of well-formed parentheses. So in this example, n equals three, here's all the different result sets. And then if n equals one, you see there's just the one result set. So whenever you get combination problems like this, uh, often what you're going to end up doing is a process known as backtracking. And when you're thinking about backtracking, basically you need to figure out what your condition is for where you're stopping and selecting the results of whatever it is you're doing in your backtracking, which is usually through recursion. So how are you exiting your recursion uh, and completing some state to add a value of picking a certain combination? So in this case, let's say when n is three, you have uh, at least three left parentheses and three right parentheses so you notice that your end condition is going to be to, uh, two times what n is because every set here has six parentheses when n is three and when n is one it has two parentheses and then you know that for well-formed parentheses there is a condition that you need to check for to avoid invalid input so in that case, you know that you cannot have a right parenthesis go before a left parenthesis. So that is also going to be part of your solution when you're trying to figure out, well, how do I write the code to generate this thing that, uh, you know, it sounds more complicated than it really is. And once you get used to backtracking, this will probably make more sense. But for combination problems, just try to simplify it, take it step by step and just think at the most basic level, what are some rules that I could write that would allow me to uh, naturally select different combinations. So one of our rules is going to definitely be uh, that the number of left parentheses has to be uh, greater than the number of right parentheses. So if you had, uh, you know, zero left parentheses, you cannot add a right parenthesis before it. The next thing is that you also need to make sure that you have at least enough left parentheses to equate to the given value you've been told to provide, which if n is three, that needed to have at least three left parentheses. So our first condition we will also check is that uh, our left count of parentheses must at least be um, less than n. If we have more than three, we are done. We, we don't want to add any more. But like I said, for our right, our right parentheses condition, it's going to have to be that for right, we need to have less right parentheses than there are left parentheses. So now let's go ahead and start working on this code and it will likely make a lot more sense. So if we're returning a list, let's go ahead and start there that we know we will want to create some way to store our results. So we're just gonna go ahead and create an empty list that can be returned. So we now have an empty uh, string list called RES. And then you're going to essentially call your recursion function that will end up backtracking and you will uh, return the results. So let's also write our return. So right now, you know, if you called your backtracking function and nothing was selected, because let's say maybe n was zero or something like that, uh, you would actually be fine right here. You'd return an empty list. So everything is good so far. And then we're also going to call our function which we'll just call generate because we're just generating all these values and we're adding them to our result list so we're going to probably pass in our uh our result list that way we can start populating it and now uh, rather than start filling in all the parameters here let's go ahead and start creating our function down below so we can name these parameters so it makes a little bit more sense so we have our list res that we're passing in and then as i was saying uh you're probably going to want to keep track of how many left parentheses and right parentheses so let's say int left int right and you will also want to know uh n because you need to know that your your target value that you uh, need to hit so basically again how many left parentheses and right parentheses uh that's where n is coming from so we want to pass that in and additionally the other thing that we want to do is whenever you're doing backtracking you're also likely to pass in the current value that you're working with so in this case if we're building a list of strings then we're probably going to be passing in a string that we are currently working with in each iteration so we will just call this the 
current string that we're working with in the iteration of recursion to see if it is valid. And now, what is that selection uh, criteria that we will have in order to know that we need to add this to our result list? Well, that would be if, as I was saying before, the length of our string is equal to two times n, because remember, n is how many of one parenthesis type, but you have, you have two types of parentheses, left and right, that you will be uh, using to build these result strings. And they're expecting that you're going to have, if you had uh, one is n, then you have two times n because you want to have one left, one right. So if the current dot length is equal to n but times two, then that's the case where you will uh, add that current value to your result set. But also here, you don't want to keep going through the recursion because if you don't have some way to exit the current recursion, you're just going to keep trying to add other things potentially after this, but you already have your valid, um, your valid string that you're adding. So just go ahead and you can do a return. Uh, optionally, you don't have to do this. You could have like maybe an else that would then go to your other logic and then basically it would end up exiting this statement without doing anything else. Really up to you, but I would rather just exclusively say right here that, hey, I've added uh, one of my result strings to the list. I'm just gonna go ahead and exit. Now, the other conditions that you have to consider, like I said, the one you wanna make sure that you consider first is your base case. You know that the left parenthesis is probably one of the most important parts here because you can't have a valid string without a left parenthesis first, then right parenthesis. So let's go ahead and write the condition for our left parenthesis first. And the main condition there is that the left parenthesis count just has to be less than the target count. So if it's less than n, so if it's less than one, we want to create one. If it's less than, you know, if n was uh, two, we want to still keep creating one if we've already added one in. But now whenever you end up entering one of these statements to choose a condition, which in this case, if it's less, if left is less than n, we're going to add a left parenthesis to our result, well, to our current string rather, um, that's where you're going to now put in this particular statement right here, another call to your recursion. So we know that we have a left count that we're now going to add one to and then we're going to keep our right count because we're not changing it we're not adding any uh right parentheses to our current string we're passing around we're not going to change our end value and our current string we're just going to go ahead and concatenate on now a left parenthesis and that is it for this uh this if statement right here now, the last thing is that you want to now cover how do you add right parentheses? So the only thing that I was saying is more important um, on as far as how right works is that right is dependent on left. So think about this, how do I make it to where I only select a right if it is valid? Well, then you already know that you will never select more left parentheses than you need to. So you're good there. So you don't have to have any extra consideration on that aspect. But for you to add a right, you need to at least have a left. So the number of right parentheses must be less than the number of left parentheses. And now you just go ahead and do your generate function again. But this time, let's generate it where we're not adding one to left. Let's instead add one to right. And then we will instead concatenate a right parenthesis. Now let's take a look at this. So basically, as you come in, let's say you only had uh, n is one. You come in, you have a current string. Uh, actually, let's go ahead and start setting that up here because I actually almost forgot to do that. So initially, when you join this uh, starting point of your function right at the very beginning, you need to set your initial value. So left will be zero, right will be zero. You're going to pass in n. And then for our current string, your base case, where you have not created any current string to consider to add to the list, it's just going to be a blank string. Okay, now we are good. So now you join the function, you say n is one, we're just we're working through this, talking it out, making sure it works. Uh, so you have this blank string, the length is not going to be equal to n times two because the length is zero. So we'll go ahead and we can move on to the next step. Now, if uh, n is one and we know that left was zero, it's going to come in here 
it's going to add that left parenthesis, it's gonna bump the left counter by one, and then we're gonna come into this statement on our recursion call. And now it's going to uh, say is the current length, which is one, equal to, if n was one times two, it's two, so it's not. So now we're here and left is not less than n because left is now one, and now we're gonna hit our right condition and it's going to end up calling our recursion again, but adding one to the right counter and a right parenthesis. And now once it comes in here, it is going to say that the length is two because you have left and a right parenthesis. So it will add that to the result set and exit that recursion. So now that would end up being here after it had called it, it's going to finish that function. Now, if we backtrack to the original recursion, you would also have another spot where it would have ended up trying to do the right side with a blank uh, a blank string, but it will not add a right parenthesis by itself because at that point, uh, you know, right would still not be less than left because it would be zero and zero. So you would exit the recursion and now you're done. And that's how you would end up having uh, just the only recursion set that you needed. But if you had uh, you know, n equals two, the same thing, just keep walking through it. And you'll notice that uh, if you want to run through the debugger, or if you actually want me to maybe make a video just drawing this out for you in the future, let me know as well. But you'll see that this is kind of the pattern of how you solve combination problems. You just have to consider what are my base case? What is the case where I need to exit my function? So you're looking for what is the goal? How do I determine that in my recursion, I've hit something that is a valid result and I need to add it to my list or however it is you're returning your results. And what are my rules for each condition? So what's my rule? So when you're doing parentheses, what's my rule for left? What's my rule for right? And that's really it. So let's go ahead and submit this. And you'll see that it was accepted. And on problems like this, I wouldn't really worry about trying to explain big O. Uh, big O for this one is going to be a little bit more complicated. I've not really seen anybody ask that in an interview because it is actually something that's a little bit more abstract. Uh, as far as mathematics go, it's not your typical just big O of N or uh, you know log of N or anything like that. This actually gets a little bit more into deeper mathematics. And so I highly doubt that they would ask you to solve that. And if they did, uh, I mean, you could try basically, if you want to take a crack at it, it has to do with uh, Catalan numbers. And if you want to look that up, you can, but really I've never seen that uh, asked in an interview where they expected you to know that. But just know that you want to at least know how to solve it. And this is a very um, a very consistent way of solving things is with, back, like I said, backtracking. So you want to also Google backtracking, look at that if you want as well. All right, so if you have any other questions, let me know in the comments below. Please take a moment to like and subscribe for future content.